Good everyone and welcome to this video. Today we have a, another discussion video on a battle pass. We've done one of these for a little bit and to be honest I've kind of missed doing them. And what better time to bring it back than Battle Pass Season 15 Northern Copy Paste. Yeah, and we're starting with the boat as usual, but the boat actually is carrying the team, so to speak. For those that haven't been here before, this is where I go over each vehicle of the Battle Pass, go over my opinion of it, and pretty much just talk about the Battle Pass in general. And, uh, yeah, I just mentioned, as I said just then, that the boat is the one carrying the team. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, this is very similar to the USS Tucumcari. It's not the exact Tucumcari, as far as I can tell and look up. It, it, it seems to be like a, a rival to it. Um, and, yeah, let's just say if the boat in your battle pass, which most people don't give a shit about, is the one carrying the battle pass for you, You've already fucked up your battle pass as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not the only one with this opinion because Harry's just done a video on the battle pass. I'll leave a link in the description to that. And a YouTuber that I did not know existed until yesterday, I believe. Uh, Snazzy Comet. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below as well. Uh, we both have the same opinion, pretty much. And, well, all I'll say is the USS Flagstaff has definitely captured the flag in terms of being the unique and left the other two sticking the bird up, pretty much. So as you'll notice in a little video there, there is something very different about... If you've ever seen or played the Tucumcari, I've never played the Tucumcari, but like, I know what it is. You'll notice that's an M551 Sheridan turret on the front there. Yeah, now... For those that are praying it gets the ATGM, it's not going to get that. It's not exactly going to be, you know, the best for it. It's pretty much just going to be a howitzer that lobs HE, which, I I, I mean, it's all right. The, the Sheridan's got a good enough high explosive round, so that's fine. Maybe it'll give it the heat just for a bit of extra pen against other ships, but personally, I doubt it. I don't think they'll do that. But, like I said, this thing does also have a little trick where you can swap out the Sheridan turret for a 40mm Bofors. Now, you will have to watch this frontal part here, over the front of the bow, because this will obstruct your 40mm Bofors firing angles. So, just bear that in mind. I would imagine this thing gets around 10 degrees of gun depression on this. So, just bear that in mind. But this thing does have a really high top speed as well. I think it's like 90... Yeah, here we are. 94 kilometers an hour that's nearly 60 miles per hour to put it into perspective now of course if you are going to be bum rushing caps and stuff like that i would personally prefer the bofers this would be more suitable for most maps but in close in dogfighting maps i actually think the sheridan's 152 is going to be superior now of course you do have a mortar in the back and a few 12.7 machine guns as well for a bit of anti-aircraft defense so it's not completely useless. It's pretty good as a cap ship, if that's the word I would use. So at least that's something. Like, this thing can have its use. And so can the other two vehicles in the Battle Pass. But the problem is, they are copy-paste. Which is why I'm calling this Northern Copy-Paste. So let's take a look at the second vehicle, which definitely ruffled some feathers. Let's put it that way. This, again, I'm getting sick of seeing PVD-1Cs, I'll be honest. This is our third Battle Pass Mustang. And, uh, yeah, I'm not too pleased. For those that don't know or haven't paid attention, we've had the J-26, David, as part of the Battle Pass, and we've also had the F-6C, which is also part of the Battle Pass. Then you've got to think, we have the American P-51 in the tech tree. We have the P-51C-11 Evelina in the Japanese tech tree. And now we have this. What's next? One in Britain. Oh wait, better not say that, but you get my point. So, what does this thing bring to the table over the J-26 David and the F-6C? Answer is, bugger all. The only thing that this thing is better than the J26 David at is it actually gets proper 50 cals 
This should get mid-war belts and it can carry the bombs. So it's already beaten the David. But the problem is, is you're going to be facing what I like to call, and is a Pokemon TCG term, a mirror match. So what this means is we're going to be having a lot more matches which are decided by P51Cs. P51C is a very capable aircraft and can definitely do a lot of work. So as you can imagine, a lot of mirror matches is not going to be a good thing for the, not just the meta at that sort of BR, but just in general. Like It's going to be more down to pilot skill, which most people would say is a good thing, and to be honest, there is argument for that. The problem is, this is a battle pass that you're paying for, or if you grind it to 125, thank god I didn't, you would be getting this thing for free. But the really big answer is, would you really want to waste your time just to get another Mustang? I don't think so. So as I said, it is a new P-51, well I say new, it's not new, but you get my point. It is something for China and it does provide a different premium in the rank 3 area. Because obviously the only other one is the Zero, which isn't for everyone, and the Zero has lost a little bit of its touch. And of course, at rank 4 you have the Ki-84, which is a really good aircraft, but of course does take a little bit of player skill to know how to use it effectively. And whilst this is going to be forgiven for new players, you really could have done better, Gaijin. Like, seriously, really could have done better. But yeah, you'll notice under the wings, like the David, it does get bombs. These can be up to 500 pound bombs. You can have two 100s, two 250s, or two 500s. Perfectly adequate, and, well, it's more cast for China, I guess, which isn't a, a bad thing, but, you know, it's it's not good when, as I said earlier, the boat is carrying the battle pass, and, well, it doesn't get much better when we move on to the tank. And speaking of the tank, we have the... I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name. I'm just going to call it a Tiger 2P, because that's what it is. This is a Swedish, and is the only other nation that could probably get this vehicle, Tiger 2P. What was this thing used for by Sweden, you may ask? Well, it wasn't in combat, for those that are wondering. No, they bought this to test anti-tank weaponry. It never saw action, and all it did in its life was just be a target, well, a bit of target practice. This is an absolute joke to say the least, for a, for a top reward in a battle pass where they did a great battle pass in the previous season. They did do a questionable one before that with the B7A2 involved, but at least that battle pass had some uniqueness. The battle pass before this, which had the Strike Master and everything, was excellent. Like, there's no, there's no other word for it. The other battle passes involved have just been really good. Like, it's, you know, not too bad. Then, of course, we've had the IL-8, we've had um, other battle passes involved with that, and personally, I think that was a pretty good battle pass as well. Like, yeah, wasn't the best battle pass we've ever had. I still think that belongs to the ITP and the F2G in terms of, like, unique vehicles. But then they decide to go back on themselves and do copy-paste yet again. This isn't acceptable, Gaijin. And I know someone's going to jump in the comments and go, oh... Gaijin are doing well with this. They've removed the side skirts. It's unique. And they broke the mud guards on the front. That doesn't make it unique. That just makes it more... I would arguably say reduces the weight like we're doing Fast and Furious crap. But guess what? This is a 68 ton behemoth that isn't going to care about losing a few ton... Well, like, not even a ton. It wouldn't even lose that from removing that extra sheet metal. It probably lose like 0.2 of a ton. And last I checked, the King Tiger isn't exactly good for drag racing, so there you go. Additionally, there's one other thing that people aren't really bringing up. Now, Harry did mention this, and I think Snazzy did as well. I only got to briefly watch their videos, because um, I'd literally just got... I've gotten home for work about half an hour ago, and I obviously saw their videos, briefly looked at it. I don't know if they mentioned it, but I know Harry did, because I... I wanted to see his opinion on the King Tiger. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, this doesn't exactly have much of a lineup. So this tank sits at 6.3 in the German tree. And the ideal Swedish lineup for around that BR is 
Now the Tiger 2H, which has the better turret, already suffers quite a bit these days in 6.7, 7.7 matches. Now can you imagine taking a worse turret with easier weak spots to pen and putting that at 6.7? Oh, and that front plate ain't gonna save it from some things. It may be a very strong front plate, but guess what? People will just shoot the turret. So, yeah, good luck with that. And like I said, the only redeeming factor is one, this lovely skin, and two, this lovely skin. Which, personally, I would have gone down a different route. I would have gone down the cosmetics, and like not actual like gaps in the armor or anything like that cosmetic hit markers where the tank was hit what it was hit by like writing on the tank and done that instead that would have made this skin a lot better in my personal opinion but they haven't they've just bunged it in a battle pass and just gone from there and as you can see we have alex here at the top saying so russia should also get the tiger and the mouse or the us gets a tiger too because of this same logic what a joke and that pretty much summarizes this battle pass. Like, yeah, there's one or two people who, like, don't disagree with it. But they also point out, I would love to see some actual Swedish tanks instead. Not this. And, you know, Gaijin, you, you know you can do better. We have loads of vehicles that we are missing. We don't want this crap, is all I'll say. All I'll say is, if you're buying this Battle Pass, you're probably buying it for the, either the boat or the Mustang. You're not really buying it for this. Do not buy it because of the King Tiger. Trust me, you're going to regret it. Up tearing this thing to 6-7 will already be a death sentence for the tank. And not only that, whilst the Tiger 2 does have a very good gun and a very good front plate, as I said, a lot of vehicles can crack that front plate, and that turret is even easier to pen. So all I'll say is, spend your money wisely, but personally, give this battle pass a miss. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all to it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the discussion video on the the season 15, I almost forgot then. And uh, yeah, all I'll say is, do not buy this battle pass. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below of this battle pass. And personally, you'll be lucky to get the P51 out of me is all I'll say. And even then, I might not even grind it. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all to it, and I will see you all on the next one.